Hey guys, this is Joe, founder and host of StartupRate.io. As you guys may already know, I've run this podcast full time since January 2021. I'm very happy to announce that Anchor FM is my sponsor for this podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free and it's easy to use, even for a newbie. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Once again, I'm here in Frankfurt in my study and Christian is there in New York. Hey Christian, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great and from New York from my cave and uh, apologies because there is construction in front of my building so probably this will interfere with the audio every now and then but it should be fine. Yes, but usually with your sound uh, with your sound pieces you only play in like the sirens of the New York fire department, right? There you go. But today it's construction. Some new stuff <laughs> going on. Sledgehammer, the classical thing for New York. Here we go. Let us get into the news. We are bringing you the October news. This recording was done on 28th of October 2019, just three days before Halloween, which is more and more celebrated here in Germany. And once again, knowledge you wouldn't have to have. Uh, find the hosts here. You find down here in the show notes a link to our website www.startuprate.io forward slash and all the text um, you'll find it down here and there you'll find all the links all the text everything we talked about and you can follow up sponsoring message startups.observer supports this program startups.observer is like online dating for startups and investors it's by far the easiest and most efficient way to research potential investment candidates or look for potential investors learn more here housekeeping time to brag we are in the process of setting up sub podcasts for special interests main reason is we have so much content and we just try to keep it on startuprate.io as well as um, on the special um, interest podcast. They'll be audio only. They'll be available on Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, and so on and so forth. And you'll only find specific content from the StartupRate.io channel there. For example, FinTech Germany by StartupRate.io is already online and joined the more than 2,000 people who already subscribed there. We just got the approval of our channel Security Sutra by StartupRate.io, which covers, as you can guess, cybersecurity. There'll be more. We are in the process of setting up Deep Tech Germany as well as a Blockchain Germany by StartupRate.io. They are all intended to our audience, which wants to keep up only on certain topics. And Christian, I do believe you have some stuff on the ecosystem, right? Uh, yes, there's a lot of uh, things going on with the ecosystem this time around. And um, we found a couple of articles talking about the growth and maturity of the European startup scene. Um, for example, on a website called Sifted, which is backed by uh, the Financial Times, and the uh, address is sifted.eu. It's a new media site for uh, innovation and entrepreneurship in Europe. And uh, there we found an opinion piece making the point that there are now 15 times as many 1 billion plus euros tech startup as there were a decade ago, but also saying that those um, that the cities in which those startups are based need to connect better um, in order to be able to compete with the Silicon Valley um, 
or other places in the world which are considered hot spots of entrepreneurship. Um, to give you one quote out of the article, it says, um, tech is a huge growth engine for Europe. The average venture funded European startup with more than 10 million euros has grown by 25% since 2013 in contrast to the European economy's whole growth of 1.7% in the same period of time. The number of professional developers across the continent is growing at 5.7 million and rising. It outweighs the United States by now, which has around 4.4 million and remains static year on year. Uh, the ecosystem is set to expand even further over the next 12 months. Cities with active tech communities like Warsaw and Vienna are expected to join the established tech hubs as Ber such as Berlin, London and Barcelona and the number of high quality ventures they are birthing. If Europe wants to stay ahead in today's world, it must embrace the tech world is the bottom line there. Job 50 eustartups.com came up for Ada Loveless Day with a list of Europe's most influential women in startup and venture capital space. More than a dozen from GSA, Germany, Switzerland and Austria. You can see the full list on EU startups and in the show notes, um, the ladies we like to mention. Just here too, um, Lea Sophie Kramer, which will, be, which will be part of our news companies down there in the show notes and Maria Penanen from Frankfurt, who is the co-founder of Accelerator Frankfurt. Hang on, here is the button. Back to you, Chris. Um, I have another opinion piece. Uh, it comes from Entrepreneur Europe, so probably you should take it with a grain of salt how much they uh, emphasize the European or the importance of Europe in the startup space. So, But still, I found it interesting because um, the headline was Forget Silicon Valley, you were, Europe will soon be home to the best startups. And to give you some quotes or to show you how their reasoning is that they say um, that's not to say that innovation hasn't occurred outside American borders during this era. Spotify, Skype, Edion, Graphcore, Monzo and Deliveroo all sprung up and scaled in Europe. However, these global success stories have done little to change the consensus that America is the birthplace of best tech. Its stateside companies who still hog the limelight, set the PR agenda and dominate our consciousness. For many, it's hard to see beyond the stars with US stripes, yet we should be very wary of letting the Silicon Valley mythology continue to cloud our perspective as it's a worldview which is becoming rapidly outdated. While there's no denying America continues to play a huge role in developing the tools of the future, other geographies are giving our American cousins a run for the money when it comes to building radical new technologies. Um, and then just to give you some numbers that are quoted here, alongside a booming market for continental fintech and fashion tech ventures, GovTech is another prime example of where Europe is set to reign supreme. Um, from contactless donation devices for homelessness initiatives, messaging apps for doctors or data protection dubs, bots, GovTech focuses on helping public sector services work better. And it's one of the most rapidly growing sectors in technology, currently valued at around $400 billion globally and said to be worth um, 20 billion pounds in 2025 in the UK alone. And that means it's already 25 times the size of the law tech sector. And what I found interesting or found interesting about this in general, end of quote, what I found interesting uh, about this in general was um, that it seems to me once again as if Europe is more considered to be um, the hotbed for B2B solutions for probably a bit less glamorous solutions, whereas most of the uh, companies we see coming from the US are uh, more consumer oriented, but that's probably not where most of the money is. Hmm. 10 things Europe's VC managers are talking about via European Investment Fund. To give you some background, the European Investment Fund, EIF, uh, was established in 1994 
4 is the European Union Agency for the Provision of Finance to SMEs, small and medium enterprises, headquartered in Lovely and in Luxembourg. Their top 10 points, and we just give you two, and you can find the rest on the website via the link. Three quarters of VC managers are targeting AI and machine learning, and Germany is growing in popularity. Who would have thought that a few years back? <laughs> yes. Um, another article we found was uh, comes from Quartz, a uh, well-known uh, tech or new tech website. Um, and uh, Quartz was looking at the so-called neobanks, meaning companies like uh, the German N26 and Revolut, uh, which aim to be some kind of like Amazon for finance, but which are also often heavily criticized. So uh, the article makes the point that neobank valuations might bubble up, but investors are already thinking about even better bets in fintech. Um, for example, based on current valuations and recent funding rounds, it's clear that there are still plenty of smart people who see immense promise for neobanks in the West. 18 of Europe's biggest fintechs are now valued at more than $1 billion. Um, but um, there are also already companies who help traditional institutions make uh, more money and found their way in the uh, found their market um now i should be back there was a, yeah i'm back there was a little tech issue i'm sorry for example um i was so i was talking about uh, companies who work more in uh, at the back end of things for example mambu um which provides the software in the background as opposed to the so-called new banks with with the classical banks this is called a core banking system now we are at the hubs frankfurt rhine mine ipos yes plural mindspace bio check listed at nasdaq raising 100 and 41 million euros. As of recording the news, the share price increased from above 14 USD at IPO to above 17 US dollars. And Team Fewer shares open flat after Europe's biggest IPO of the year, wrote Reuters. As of recording the news, the share price de uh, decreased slightly from above 25 at IPO to slightly below 23. Mm euros per share but nonetheless this was the biggest tech ipo in europe and it was located in frankfurt talking a little bit more about frankfurt frankfurt based think assurance raised 13 million euros from eight road ventures for the commercial insurance platform think insurance offers a platform to search compare and conclude the right insurance for businesses they have been formerly known as gewerbeversicherung 24 very lovely german word after bad news Exit of the CEO and co-founder, controversial Sebastian Diemer. Heartbeat Labs, one of the investors carving out the research from the company, the rema remaining bits of Pharmaco are now sold to Canada-based Agra Flora. 10 German fintech clusters you should know about. We found the article including Frankfurt-based Commerce Ventures, which is the VC arm of Frankfurt-based Commerce Bank, one of Germany's largest banks. Finside Ventures and Fino Digital based in Kassel and Frankfurt. Kassel, that's your, your former home, Chris, right? Yes, and it obviously makes me very happy that for the first time on this show, we're talking about something in Northern Hessia. So, Hessia, so that is very nice. Uh, one last thought to about um, TeamViewer, I think, is even though there was this slight decrease, it, it still proved to be a, a better IPO than we've seen with uh, even big brand names this year, like, for example, Uber or Lyft. So still good for them. Moving on to Karlsruhe, um, there is HQS Quantum, Quantum Simulations, who offer a software which shortens the development of new materials, for example, in the chemical industry. They raised 2.3 million euros of seed financing, um, and their investors include the high-tech Gründerfonds, Unternehmertum Venture Capital Partners, and BTOV Partners. And I'll also take the other end of the German Republic, or the northern part of the German Republic, um, Hamburg, Hamburg, uh, sorry, 
in Hamburg, the Germany-based Credit Check. Um, it's an AI-based near prime loans platform. They nabbed $22 million under new CEO to expand globally. Also, hint here, Sebastian Diemer, which we just talked about in the Frankfurt News, has been the ousted CEO and co-founder of Credit Check. Uh, Mai, let's go to the very south of Germany, Munich, or as they love to see themselves, the most northern city of Italy. Munich-based car subscription service Cluno discloses 140 million in debt financing. TechCrunch writes two asset-backed financing deals totaling 80 million were signed recently, adding to 60 million of debt previously secured, i.e. it's not all entirely new money. Separately, the company raised 25 million euros in equity financing in a Series B round in February, led by Vala Ventures, the US-based venture capital firm founded by Peter Thiel. Others participated are Acton Capital Partners and Atlantic Labs, which both backed Cluno's Series A round. It brought the total equity raised by Cluno to 32 million. And I assume Chris wants to do the ecosystem. Yes, we're moving on to the ecosystem. Uh, software companies attracting are now, are now attracting higher multiples then we can figure out it's a good time to go public and we're still not seeing enough liquidity liquidity to begin to clear the unicorn roster it's concerning um that is a quote from an article um at crunchbase news it's about the airbnb plans to have a an ipo in 2020 um and it's yeah, they labeled it or headlined it with a reminder of how many unicorns still need an exit. Then the top three of e-commerce in Germany, um, the whole e-commerce in Germany is around 14 billion euros. No, sorry, I'm, that's wrong. The top three had a revenue of 14 billion euros last year. Um, that means the online sales of Amazon Otto, which is a pretty legacy German um, um, catalog retailer, and Zalando, which is probably Germany's Zappos, they account for 41.4% of the country's top 100 of biggest online retailers revenue. I found surprising here that out of the top 10 online stores, five are actually electronic retailers and only Otto and Zalando are apparel companies because usually you would expect it completely different. We also found something interesting on the podcast ecosystem. There was a publication you can find in the link. 34% of Germans listen to podcasts regularly. 13% listen daily, 25% weekly, 22% monthly. Average listener is male and earns above average income. 33% listen from home. 46% listen in the evening. And we wrap up the ecosystem with the Scooter Wars. There is an article, I do believe. Let me quickly check. It was from the information Berlin-based Lime. Lime? This is uh, one of the scooter companies. Lost to top 300 million US dollar in 2019. They say... Quota rental scooter rental operator Lime was touted itself as one of the fastest growing startups ever, blanketing cities such as Berlin, Paris, Los Angeles with thousands of two wheeled electric vehicles, including Frankfurt. But the firm is losing money nearly as quickly as it expands, in part because the company's vehicles tend to break down before they can generate much cash. Lime's operating loss is likely to surpass. 300 million this year on more than 420 million of gross revenue that means they are actually spending somewhere around 700 million whoa that's a lot of money uh yes which makes us moving on to um companies we found on the website silicon canals we found a list of 10 promising german scale ups worth your attention this year um among them are Sprices, signavio hydrogen lohc and uh Salonis. 
just for the simple reason we pointed them out because we we mentioned them with the at at uh, twitter and the other ones have not had any significant twitter presence study one startup fair wanted to find out which startup has the happiest employees surprisingly n26 is one of the worst performers as measured by kunu which is like a version of something like glassdoor here in germany chris new york right Uh, the New York-based venture capital fund Inside Partners invests 130 million euros into Munich-based commerce tools. So that's a legitimate investment. And um, another like small good news from German from the German startup scene is that the Berlin-based SME-focused digital bank Penta now tops 10,000 business customers. And last but not least, we told you we will talk about her. Amor Lee founder Lea Sophie Kramer leaves the company Amor Lee, which, with which she achieved a classy image for sex toys. The company was bought 2013 by ProSieben Sat1, where ProSieben and Sat1 are two of the biggest private, uh, privately owned uh, media houses, uh, TV stations, for approximately 100 million euros. Guys, there's only stay ahead of the curve above. We are looking forward to bring you the next startup news wrap up, which will go live at Thanksgiving. And this is a great day because I do enjoy my turkey here in Germany since I do it myself. Okay. I'm, what am I supposed to say? I'm looking forward to my tofurkey. So. <laughs> great. It was such a pleasure talking to you, Chris, again. Thank you very much and looking forward to seeing you next, week, next month. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.